Okay, hi everyone, it's Gonzel here. So let's talk about the uh, Taiwan server update today. Um, there's basically no content update because you see here, the very first item instead of the actual content update is just a preview of next week. They are effectively bringing forward the ocean content for us in Taiwan one week ahead instead of, I mean if you follow the usual schedule, it will be another week. But uh, yeah, they're just bringing it forward. But honestly speaking, I'm not impressed by uh, Ocean. Okay, so let's just look at Ocean content itself. Basically, yeah, you have new boats for you to travel around. Uh, different type of po boats which will affect your boat combat and uh, sailing, I think. Then you got to hire workers for the boat. What else? Uh, so you can do fishing, you can do uh, fishing for treasures, mm, getting upgrading your ship for cannons and the uh, armor, getting materials for it. And here you have like similar concept to bounty quest, but for ocean. And this is how you get the, I believe the blue SP is uh, specific to the uh, ocean level. As well as the ocean currency. Yeah. Ocean currency is used for other stuff. But honestly speaking, when I saw the Korean broadcasters playing, right, I was really bored by it. I felt really bored by this uh, ocean content. It's like the ship moves so slow. The ship moves like so slow. And it's, it's just really quite boring in my opinion. I mean, although it's nice that they add new world boss here, but I think it's not being added immediately. If I'm not wrong. Then you have the trading for the boat. Then the, like what I said, the uh, battleship versus battleship kind of battle. But, um, honestly speaking, this is this does not excite me at all. In fact, when I saw this, I was reminded of Witcher 3. Uh, the boat part on Witcher 3, where you can do all the maritime, and even that is a lot more exciting than this. So, I don't know, I feel very jaded by this update because um, as you guys know, my frequency of video upload has been uh, lowered recently because uh, I've been really busy, both in work and in real life, uh, taking on quite a lot of stuff in work and in real life, uh, there's another milestone to me in my life. So. I am actually thinking of quitting this game, especially since the next content is like so boring. Oh wait, the music is a bit loud. Sorry about that. Okay, so anyway, yeah, let's just wait and see how it goes. Probably I just AFK farm a lot more now. And well, if anyone is interested in buying my Taiwan account, I definitely don't mind. Uh, I'm definitely open to suggestions and offers. Okay, uh, so that is it for the uh, ocean content. If I go back to the patch notes, right? Um, basically, they are changing the desert boss spawn time, so it's going to be harder to to uh, farm him. Other than that, some other quality of life changes like you know if you have a blood king that didn't log in for seven days you can just remove him uh, oh there is something here that's slightly better which is that uh, the chance of getting the orange totem yeah I know you guys are getting orange totem today I saw the value in it is basically uh, increase in terms of the drop rate from getting it from the Elyon uh, maps which you guys are still having I know they are getting hard to as well don't worry I'll do a video on that okay uh, anyway I already have done the first guide on Hadoom so you guys can check that out okay they are just removing some of the fish uh, they are just making it faster for you to do the pet fusion changing some of the condition for the mythical orange uh, outfit doesn't really matter like I said it's, there's like no update this week it's just events and a bit of quality change but there is a striker buff which I think you guys should be getting at the same time as us which is uh, today 
So I know a lot of people have been waiting for some striker buff or news on striker awakening. So since there's no content update, right? I tell you what, I will do the striker review at the end of this video. So that's the last part of this video. So you guys can check that out, yeah. You can skip ahead to the end if you want to. I'm just gonna quickly talk about the Taiwan events now. Okay, so we are getting Black Spirit Adventure again. At least it's one of the better uh, events. Though, like I said, uh, it's just more of the same thing. Mm, here it's pretty much the same, really. The only difference is that the Golden Bot now has the Chaos Core material, which is the one where you need 100 of it to craft a Chaos Diamond. So I guess it's a nice addition, a nice touch, but nothing too outstanding per se. Uh. Again, a hash mesh of uh, previous events. So you have the the one where you have the bandit dungeon, the two different types of the bandit dungeons. Uh, they are doing Chaos Muraka on Tuesday again. So, oh, that means today 9 30, we have uh, the Chaos Muraka few boss, few world boss. Then, this is the one where you have the five different stages of the ancient ruins. The, the one that looks like ancient ruins, but it's not exactly ancient ruins. There's all different type of uh, stages within. Uh, there's one that you have to run around in circles uh, to avoid the spiders. Then you have the Black Spirit Race. Uh, at least they slightly improve the hot time. It's 300% for the weekend, although they reduce it by an hour. And they are giving us the uh, Darkness Audio again. Audio of the Fallen, sorry, the one where you fought for the Enriched Bosses. And then some weekend GM quest, or just on Sunday, not even on Saturday. So it's like a filler, if you ask me. You know, like when you watch anime and they give you some filler episodes that's not part of the canon, canon material, uh, not part of the original manga. Yeah, similar concept. So eh, not impressed. Um, hot time is pretty much the same during weekdays. It's still one hundred percent, and two scrolls given each a day. And three hundred percent for this for the weekend. Um, at least they are giving us twenty five uh, dice fragments every day at ten pm. But uh, that's about it. Okay, let me just quickly go through. Ah, okay. So let's go to the cash shop. Oops. Okay, not just a moment. Okay. So adjust the back to the screen. Let me just off the music here. Okay, so new items wise, there's actually five new items. Using cash itself, there's only four. Oh, I didn't notice that this is so cheap. <laughs> they are, wow, this is really cheap for sushi. I think you guys will riot when you guys see this. So 200 white pearls, 200k uh, Kelfa Dust. And a random chance of getting 15 to 150 sushi. Obviously, the 150 sushi is like super low chance to get. Well, the 15 is quite common to get. So, at this price, for us, I would say it's quite normal. Because we need a lot just to enhance it. You guys should have seen uh, my previous video. When I think it was a live stream where I did the sushi enhancement. Succeeded from V double I to V triple I. But you can tell the amount of sushi is required is not easy. I think I spent like 200 plus and I get succeeded once. So yeah, but this further proves what I've been saying in global that sushi will become very common in future. So don't fret too much about that. In fact, it's Kelfa stars that you'll be missing. Even for myself, I'm missing Kelfa stars at the moment. I'm lacking Kelfa stars at the moment. Alright, now this week's package is a bit strange. Or rather, it has a common feature which is this uh, pink chest here. Basically, it's a wish chest, if I were to literally translate it. So, for this price, right, you get 50k restoration scrolls, which is okay. 4000 white pearls and 10 wish chests. So, 10 wish chests, if you look at the very grand price of the wish chest, it looks fantastic, right? 3 pink accessories or 300 fragments, which is very nice. It's even more than one pink weapon. One pink weapon gives 250 of the uh, dimensional fragments. This is 300. Then you have the accessory, which is uh, two pink accessories. 130 of the 100% scroll. So obviously, it's nice as well. Uh, 100 fragments is like 
I don't know. Constellation price? And okay, I shouldn't call it Constellation price because the prices bought down there are worse. Tier 6 pets, which I think is pretty okay. Don't forget that this is just from one wish chest if you're lucky enough to get it. And then you have the boss stamps 15k, valor tokens 10k, restoration scroll 12k, and basically more of the same items but in lower number. So, like restoration scroll is 5k, boss stamp 5k, etc. 100% scroll is 10. Relic chest is like one red relic chest. If they didn't put in this red relic chest, I would have might have been interested in buying but I actually think that this is not that worth it unless you feel like playing gambling or gacha you want to open the 10 chest to see you know what you can get from this and they're quite evil too you see right I think this is the first time I saw a $100 package with 10 purchase limit usually it's about 6 purchase limit so this time around they want you to spend more with the wish chest they want to entice you to gamble with the wish chest basically you know, because this is to attract people. Um, personally, I actually don't think this has high value. It's way too expensive. And the other reason why I say so, right, is because when you look at the range of items that you can get, I assure you that most of the time you'll just be getting all this. Just 5k boss stands from one of the chests. Of course, if you look at overall value, let's say I just take 550k boss stamps with 50k restoration scroll plus 4k white pearl, Value-wise, it's actually not too bad compared to the previous packages. It's really not too bad, but it's expensive. It's a RNG chance. If you don't get the items that you want, you are quite screwed, right? If you don't get the stuff here, you're quite screwed actually. So I myself is not impressed by this really. To the this week's uh, construct, but then again, maybe it's because I I'm a bit. Uh, bored of this game and I already have thoughts of quitting so that's why this doesn't appeal to me okay now the next chest is pretty much the same thing but with half the price means half the number of whoopers 30k valor tokens instead of restoration scrolls and 5 of the chests instead of uh, 10 wish chests now you move on to 3457 SGD which is 30% of this so the wish chest is also 3 Purse is 1200, which uh, more or less is proportionate. And then you have 60 red light stones, which is nice for hardened potion. But no one really requires hardened potions right now because uh, after the second anniversary event, people have all used up their boss rushes. They do have a bit of quite a number of the hardened potion left. So even I myself, I have a healthy amount left now, so I won't be enticed to buy this as well. Sushi, like I said, I don't need it. I need Kelfast Dust. Although this has 200k, but yeah. So, am I going to buy anything this week? The answer is actually likely no. Even if I do buy, it's just for the sake of the white pearls. Just so that I can continue buying the daily white pearl items. That's all. Mm, in fact, I think I can do without those white pearl items as well. Since uh, that is mainly for Path of Glory extra entries as well as the uh, light stones for Hardon Potion. So Hardon Potion I have access, POG I can do without, I'm already at plus 29. The jump from plus 29 to plus 30 for ping is really huge. So anyway, we'll be getting a new season in a few weeks. So there's no real need to invest in POG anymore, at least in my opinion. Of course, if you are a wheel player trying to strive hard to get your CPU as high as possible, you should spend. No doubts about that. As a Dolphin, if you feel like trying your luck, then yeah, you can do that. But I personally, probably not gonna buy. At most, I buy one or two just to try my luck. But yeah, I'm more, I'm really more inclined towards not buying. I might be better off just buying the uh, package for doing the enhancement. Uh, which is this. You saw this week I already bought 4 and I did not get a single plus 8. That's why I'm very very disappointed. And I it further reinforces my urge or desire to quit actually. If not for my guildmates, I think I would have quitted already. Oh, of course, and for you guys as well. But uh, fret not, even if I do quit or if I turn F to P, I will still do videos uh, guides for you guys. Because whatever I know, even if I do quit or what or whatever, 
whatever I know is still very applicable and very helpful to you guys, so you don't need to worry about that. Alright, so uh, yeah, so one last item I want to talk about is the fact that now they have given us the class change set here just for just 4000 white pearls. You see here, it's 4000 white pearls for the weapon and sub weapon exchange scroll, the level exchange, as well as the 12 skill boots. Yeah. So I guess this is in line with what they have in Korea right now. It's 4,000 white purse, red purse to change. Um, will you guys get this? I don't think so. Because class change is probably going to still be expensive for you guys at least for quite a bit of time. Before they give you guys this 4,000 black purse package in my opinion. Alright. So these are just the 5, item, five new items this week. I've covered the event. I've covered the purse shop. I've covered the basically no content update other than striker. So let's talk about striker now. Although the video is a bit longer than I wanted to, but yeah, it's fine. Let's talk about striker now. Oh, by the way, it's very laggy in the Taiwan server today. They already acknowledge that they have a problem on this. Mm, I hope I'm still at least able to do the video for you guys oh my god okay but at least I can't click this anymore so I guess it's loading just as really slow okay so let's go back to the oh there is one thing I forgot to do right I forgot to show the reads for that wish chest okay while well, it's loading these are the reads for the wish chest so like I said right you can see from the percentage it's very very easy to just get these four items they make up more than Almost 80% of the percentage chance already. And the rest of it is like, you know, 5%, 5%, 3%. And then the best items are like 0.1%, 0.2%, 0.2% again for 2 ping. 3 ping accessory, 0.10%. So, you know, the rates of this is really terrible. You just need to spend a lot for a very, very, very low chance of getting this. More likely than not, you're just getting this, and uh, maybe if you're a bit slightly lucky, you get some in the mid range. Top tier is gonna be very hard. That's why I say that this chest, right? Although if you even if you get the worst item, it's still highly slightly higher value than before. It's a bit of a scam if you are looking to get these items. Yeah, uh, I think that it should be the sushi one. Ah, okay. So the sushi one is here. So highest percentage chance is the twenty sushi. 150 is 0 0.01 percent so which is to be expected since uh this chest is very cheap it's only five plus uh sgd yeah all right so let's go back to the uh striker notes as well as the striker itself okay so let's look at what has been buffed ah okay so the typhoon skill has been buffed the tornado skill Increase speed. What else? Oh, okay. So they make it much faster for you to. Once you use this, you can continue using it again instead of before where there's a slight delay. Ah, this basically when you use this skill, it improves the speed in which you turn towards your target. Okay, there's something one point I miss here. When enduring auto combat, it will increase the rate of you using the tornado skill. And this, this is the one I'm talking about, you know, the one that really hits far and uh, it's his most powerful skill in the arena, I would say. This is not good. That's a grab skill. This is the eleventh skill. So the first skill will the first skill usage rate will also be increased in farming. At least a two second cooldown, so I guess it's good for this to be increased in uh, farming. That's good. Let's see what else. And they will reduce the rate at which the striker uses the normal attack. And this, yeah, this skill is actually not great in terms of DPS if you think about it. DPS versus area. Okay, so basically this skill and the normal attack uh, rate of happening during auto combat is reduced while this 
as well as this is increased. So that should help farming quite a bit in auto combat. Uh, okay, I think I have to go to town, go outside of town to try out that skill. Just go to my farming area. <laughs> There is a change to the movement skill though. And let me just read that in detail later. Let's try out the Typhoon skill first. Or rather, Tornado's Kick. I'm not sure what's the uh, exact English name. Ah, okay. It is really faster than before. Can definitely feel it. Ah, I mean, there's a lag here, so. The skill is as faster, it's just that the mobs uh there's a server, there's an entire server lag right now, so it's not too bad. Yeah, it's much faster. It's indeed much faster. Okay, let's see. Uh oh, this is not hard doom, so it's not accurate. Not to mention it's lagging. Okay, uh let's look at the skill description for the next one, which is uh the immobility skill. So let's see what has changed here. Let's cool down now. This is pretty much the same as previously, right? Well, they did add a super armor on this skill when you enhance it. But it seems weird that, weird that, did they really buff it? Because the description here is not the same. Oh yeah, yeah it's here, it's here, sorry. Yeah, so by enhancing the skill, other than the previous uh, effect that you have, they are adding on super armor now. But it's not effective in arena. It just helps him in GVG in that sense. So after the using this skill, you can do uh, immediate running. The movement will be much smoother. You okay, can immediately move. Okay, let's see. Is this right? Uh, yeah, the delay is definitely better than previously. So the third one is about the fact that when you use it on a slightly higher ground, you, 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 they are fixing it where when you use it on higher ground, you don't end up dropping your movement. Okay, next one is a actual PvP buff where the skill damage is increased by ooh, almost 30%. Okay, almost a 30% increase for this, uh, where is it? this skill. You know the one that you can uh, use in your PvP combo? <laughs> the, the drop kick basically. So basically, the drop kick damage has been increased in PvP. So I guess that's nice. Okay, one last change. The grab skill, basically, they have increased the distance that you will drag your opponent. Yep. I think based on this description, it seems to imply that they are increasing the rate of it grabbing as well. Maybe the AOE or the chance of it grabbing. Along with the distance increase. So maybe that will be good. Maybe the pro striker players, the straight players who are using striker as main can try it out. Yeah. So if you ask me whether it's a huge buff, doesn't feel like a huge buff. Buff, in fact, it feels more like a a bit of a PVE buff and just a bit of GVG here on this skill. And this is PVP and GVG. This is PVP as well. But anyway, striker in the first place is a PVP character. So I I don't know. I felt like this buff is not big enough to warrant using him as a main still. Yeah. 
It's a light, minor little buff that's not enough. I mean, look at what they did with Armage. Armage is like super OP, but Striker is buffed to. Like, there's no buff. So, it's a bit disappointing for Striker players, I would say. Alright, so that's it. That's it. That, sorry, that is, that is it for today's uh, video on the Taiwan update. I'll do one more for the global update later. I know you guys have quite a decent uh, amount of update this week. So I'll do a separate video on that. Yep. Alright, so thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you guys next video. Bye!